Hi, I'm Michael Santos with the Earning Freedom Program, and I'm happy to be collaborating with my friend and partner, Justin Paperni at White Collar Advice. If you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you are embarking upon a journey through the criminal justice system. You're likely facing a sentencing hearing, and it's really important, I think, that you think through what steps you can take to position yourself for the lowest possible sentence, to serve that sentence in the best possible environment, to get out of prison at the soonest possible time and to transition into the supervised release period with the easiest transition, the highest level of liberty, and hopefully terminating your, your time on supervised release at the, at the earliest possible time. All of that begins as soon as you start planting a seed for the outcome that you want. It's no different from anything else that you achieve in life that's worthwhile. You've got to prepare. If, I, if I'm to ask you to envision a beautiful home that you want to build on a plot of land, you really might visualize it at first, but you've got to take more steps than just visualizing. You've got to design it. You've got to create a blueprint. You've got to build in accordance with that blueprint in order to get the outcome that you want. And it's no different from a, sent from a sentencing hearing. Sure, you've got a competent defense attorney who's likely fighting valiantly to try and get you the lowest possible sentence. But the question is, what can you do? Because at the end of the day, it's the defendant who has the most power to begin moving the needle towards a, a solid outcome. And the solid outcome is when you can get back to your family, start resuming your life in a productive manner, and put these problems with the criminal justice system far behind you. Now, those of you who know my work know that I have been through this system from a very young age and spent a very long time in this system. And during my time in the system, I worked hard to educate myself and to learn about ways that I can apply my experience to help others. Justin is the same thing. Justin went through this system. He has uh, learned a lot about it, and he's been building a career trying to help others so that they can have the best possible outcome. That's really what all of our work is about. But the reality is preparing for sentencing is a very personal matter, and it takes a lot of time to create the type of sentencing package that will advance you to the outcome that you're looking to get. And so we, pre we prepared this package uh, with hopes of helping individuals who don't have the resources to hire us to, to assist them in the w types of one-on-one -on -one consulting that, that would be necessary. Because the reality is, you know your life, but we don't know your life. And in order to prepare an effective personal sentencing narrative package, we've got to invest a lot of time and energy to interview and to take detailed notes. And during that note processing, that note taking process, we try to look for themes, themes that we can use to mitigate the, the, uh, the, the aspect of, of, your, of your crime, of what the government has said. We know that the government is going to invest a lot of resources and energy in, in arguing for the highest possible sentence. And even if they agree to a guideline range, there is still a big range. And the question is, what steps can you take or are you taking as a defendant to begin positioning yourself for the best possible outcome? Now, through the course of my career, I've worked with a lot of federal judges and a lot of prosecutors. And that work has given me some insight with regard to what steps an individual can take to position himself or herself for the best possible outcome. And in this package that we have prepared, you're going to be able to read about some of these possibilities that you can use to your advantage. But I think everything begins because a lot of the people who come, come to us, they're, they're at a stage where they haven't even pleaded guilty yet. But as the statistics will show, about 90% of everybody who has been indicted or charged in a federal crime eventually is going to come to a sentencing hearing. And when that time comes for a sentencing hearing, it's imperative that the defendant is ready. It's imperative that the defendant has done everything within his power to help all stakeholders understand him as an individual. It's very important because if, they, if the individual doesn't make that investment of time and energy to paint that picture, to tell that story, 
those who are looking and judging you are only going to see the criminal charge. And it's if you can do something to influence that at the earliest possible stage, you are going to go a long ways towards advancing your goal towards the best possible outcome. And you should know the stages that are going to follow. So once an individual pleads guilty or is found guilty, the status of the individual changes. No longer are you on pre-trial or suspected of committing a crime. With that conviction, whether it is by jury or by guilty plea, once you are convicted, you are now in the situation that you're considered a felon or convicted. Some people are even misdemeanors and still have to go through this process, but your, your status has changed within the criminal justice system. And for most people, the next step is going to be conducting a pre-sentence investigation. And that generally happens soon after the verdict, soon after the conviction. The pre-sentence investigation begins when a probation officer meets with you and begins asking you for your version of the events. Now, the probation officer who prepares the pre-sentence investigation report, sometimes known as the PSI, sometimes known as the PSR, the person who's preparing that is a, a, an employee of the district court. So probation reports to the judicial system. And their purpose is to design this report so uh, the judge can have some more insight into your life, into the defendant's life when he's imposing sentence. But the probation officer isn't going to go to the full extent of helping the judge really get a good grasp of who you are as an individual. And that's why it's so important to focus on preparation, to think about the story that you are going to weave. And I can tell you it's very difficult to weave this story if you don't have a plan in place. If you don't know what the stakeholders are going to be looking at, you don't know what to put in this sentencing narrative the sentencing narrative that can be so incredibly powerful to influencing your sentence, but also influencing your journey through the Bureau of Prisons with regard to determining what custody and classification level you're going to be serving your sentence in, with regard to what types of programs you're going to be eligible when you're inside of the prison system, with regard to when you are going to be considered for transition to either a lower security prison or to a, a what's called a residential reentry center or a halfway house, which is effectively living in society or to, on home confinement. And then you've got to be thinking about your term on supervised release, which follows after the, the, the prison sanction is, is uh, concluded. And then what type of liberty can you have on supervised release? And of course, what steps can you take to position yourself for early termination of supervised release? Now, the reality is you can't have a one-size-fits-all package. And it's really unfortunate that many defendants go through the pre-sentence investigation phase without really thinking this through. And all but the, the best attorneys will work hard to put, put a team together so that team can, so that team can, can collaborate. Uh, you you, know, you want to have people who can, can work together with you so that you can build the strongest possible package. And some of the people who may be on that team could be mental health professionals, substance abuse counselors, um, anybody who can strengthen the argument on why you are worthy of a lower sentence. And that's some of the work that we do. But again, that's very labor-intensive work because, again, we don't know anything about a defendant when we first meet them. And we can't write the same information about one defendant for another defendant because every individual is different. And if it's not personal in nature, it misses the mark. You see, the judge doesn't know anything about you. And you know yourself as a good person. You know yourself as a father or a son or a husband or a daughter or a wife or whatever. You know yourself. You didn't set out 
to become a criminal. You didn't set out to be convicted of a crime. But you find yourself in this situation, and you can't live under the delusion that everybody else who's going to be judging you sees you in this same way. To the extent you can help more people see you as the type of person you are, that's when you can truly begin to change your life. That's when you can truly begin to make sure that you're qualifying for programs in prison that could potentially advance your release date by as much as 12 months or or even conceivably two years if you got 12 months for the RDAP program and the other 12 months for the Second Chance Act and you put those together, they can have a, a, mag a massive influence on your life. But if your lawyer hasn't prepared you for all of that, if you don't understand all of that, you are going to be at a significant disadvantage. And so it behooves you to learn as much as you possibly can. But since not everybody can afford to retain us for the dozens of hours that it takes to get that type of personal story down, we've created this package. And in this package, what you're going to see is a series of the types of personal narrative letters that we have written for other individuals who have retained us. And our focus is always to... I, I ideally, number one, identify with the victims. That's, that's really crucial in your sentencing narrative. You see, when you're, when you're looking for mercy, you've got to think about what's the best pathway to persuading a judge or another stakeholder that you're worthy of mercy. And the way that we do that is we don't think about our own situation, no matter how difficult and, and troubling it is, we want to think about the victims of this crime. And I can't tell you how many defendants I meet that when I initially start working with them, they don't even recognize that there is a victim. So it's important, remember, to think about our audience. Our audience is likely a former prosecutor, is likely has a predisposed mindset of wanting to punish an individual for being guilty. So if you start from that perspective, you want to say, well, what would that person want to hear from me? And what that person doesn't want to hear is that you have suddenly found the Lord and you're going to miss your wife and your kids and you uh, really just need to be forgiven because this didn't happen or it's not your fault because somebody else put you here. Those are the worst things that you can do when you're preparing for sentencing. So when you're preparing this sentencing narrative, it's my hope that you will look at every sentence that you've written and you will ask a question, does this sentence in any way suggest that I am not taking full responsibility for my actions and that I identify with the victim? Of course you're sorry and of course you're going to miss your family. But first, focus on the victims. Focus on what you've learned from this experience. Focus on what steps you're taking to make things right. Focus on what, why the court can be certain that you're never going to appear before any court of law as a criminal defendant again. And never suggest to the judge what the sentence should be. Instead, just ask for mercy. Don't ask for forgiveness because the judge really isn't in a position to forgive you. The judge is in a position to grant mercy. And so that's what you want to be asking for. But you want to be asking for in a manner that, that leads the judge organically to recognize that you are fundamentally different from the vast majority of defendants who come before that court. If you can do that, if you can think that through, then you will realize why it's so important to be extremely personal to talk about your life, to talk about your family's influences in your life, to talk about what led you into this situation. You really want to help the judge know you as a person. And in these six sample narratives that are part of this package, you are going to see how I have done that. By interviewing for hours, I take copious notes. Those notes can, can extend to 10 single-spaced pages by the time I finish. 
and then I digest those notes, and then I look for themes within those notes, and then I craft a story. But since you've lived your life, you don't have to take all of those notes. What you have to do is figure out how to write your story in a manner that seems truthful, in a manner that truly articulates your identification with the victim, your remorse, what you've learned through the process, why you're never going to be in this situation again, what steps you can take to, to make things right. I keep reaching over here because I'm getting phone calls. And I don't want to be disrupted when I'm talking with you, so I'm just turning my phone off. But it's very important that you look at those samples that I have prepared. The final sample, by the way, is an individual who went to trial, but he still retained me to help him write his sentencing narrative. And that had a massive influence on his sentence. And every one of these people with whom I've written narratives for they have had a better outcome with regard to getting a lower sentence than they otherwise would have received. And what I always suggest that they do is they prepare this narrative before they have the pre-sentence investigation report so that when they meet with their probation officer for the first time or the probation officer who will be writing the report, they can give them the narrative. And they should say, this is a, a letter that I have prepared for the court because I know that I, I, I'm, in a, I'm, I'm really spinning out of control here and I may not get everything in, but I've taken the time to write out my feelings of what happened. And I'd like you to take this and to the extent possible, I'd like you to make it a part of the report uh, because I will be submitting it to the judge directly. And the, the real advantage of that is you will find that the probation officer will frequently cut and paste directly from your sentencing narrative into the pre-sentence investigation report. And that can have monumental influences on your life, not only at sentencing, but if you get into the Bureau of Prisons, it can help you in the Bureau of Prisons. Because once you're in the Bureau of Prisons, you will no longer have counsel with you. You'll be advocating on your own behalf. And every 30 days, right, strike that, about every six months, you are going to be having what's called a team meeting. And during that team meeting, all that's going to happen is the case manager is going to look at that PSI, that PSR, that probation report. And if you've got it, if you're successful in articulating your remorse, that can be an enormously valuable tool as you're advocating on your own behalf inside of the prison system. And that's what I'd like you to be doing. I'd like you to be thinking about this. I'd like you to be thinking about what you can do. I'd like you to be thinking about how crucial this narrative is to your future. Now, in this package, you'll see that I've, always, I've also included information on the sentencing guidelines because it's important for you to understand how the federal sentencing guidelines will influence your sentencing hearing. There previously, if you know historically about the federal sentencing guidelines, they used to be mandatory, meaning whatever was in that guideline table the judge was, by law, he had to sentence you in accordance with that guideline table um, with few exceptions. But a Supreme Court case back in 2005 came out called U.S. versus Booker, which changed the federal sentencing guidelines, making them advisory rather than mandatory. And when they became advisory, they have served to really open a world of possibilities for you as a defendant if, with regard to influencing that sentence. By and large, judges are going to use those sentencing guidelines as a good barometer, but if you're effective at creating a narrative and helping the judge see you as an individual rather than just seeing you for the conviction, if you're effective in helping the judge understand how you got there and kind of humanizing you, making it more believable, showing your remorse, showing how you identify with the victims, showing what you have done to make things better. If you can do that effectively, you could, you could shave months or potentially years off of your time away from family. And if that's important to you, I really urge you to spend the time and the energy in understanding everything there is to know about the sentencing hearing. Now, this package also includes some information on character reference letters. Very important part of the proceeding. 
but you can't, I didn't include a lot of samples. I included one. And there's a reason. I don't want a defendant to be distributing samples to their friends and say, write it like this. Because what, what a lot of people will do is they're, they're, they're afraid, they don't know what to write, and so they will just take lift, cut and paste and lift and use the same type of phrasing in the letter. And when they do that, it shows the judge that it's not authentic. It's more boilerplate. And that doesn't help anybody. So you really want to have a, a letter that is very personal in nature, that isn't never, that isn't ever suggesting to the judge the appropriate sentence, but rather is strictly focusing on your character, your honesty, your integrity, some of the good that you have done in society. And I did include one sample in here, and that sample I consider to be an exemplary sample of a character reference letter. I have basically crafted it myself. I did it because I just wanted you to see this is what a good character reference looks like, an effective character reference letter looks like. It doesn't suggest to the judge what sentence to impose. It shows that I've known the defendant for longer than a decade. It describes why I know that his character is good. It tells a personal story that can't be made up. And that, and so the judge knows that I'm authentic. And that's what I'd like you to be able to communicate to the people you're asking to write a character reference letter. And then finally, I included in this package, uh, the appendix, two, two projects. I gave you a complete pre-sentence investigation report so you can kind of get kind of an idea of what it's going to look like. And I also include a sample of my own supervised release report that I just completed last month. And the reason I wanted you to see that, I just wanted you to see how all of these, these factors uh, or these issues are going to um, characterize your life. And there are going to be people who are judging you simply based on your pre-sentence investigation report. And if, to the extent that you can incorporate your sentencing narrative into that report, you really advance the possibility of a better sentence. So I hope this is helpful to you. I have included a lot of YouTube videos for, with, that I have done with judges. Um, you can certainly look at other YouTube videos that I have produced or that Justin has produced to give you more insight on what is coming. But uh, as always, it's our hope that you, you invest the time and the energy to educate yourself because this is the biggest sale of your life. And it's really important that you're prepared. So that's what we try to do is prepare you or give you the, the tools that you can prepare yourself. And I hope you find this helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, um, I'm pretty easy to be found, just as is Justin. Thank you very much.